Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here with this Tuesday afternoon mountain weather update. A few live cameras. We still have some residual snow coming down. This is Grand Targhee up on the west side of the Tetons. And it's been snowing off and on pretty much all day. And actually since last night up there in the Tetons. And I'll show you the radar in a second. But the emphasis of this cold front is really moving into Colorado and northern New Mexico over the next 24 hours. So that's where it's headed. But uh, here's solitude, still a little bit of light snow coming down there, but even a few breaks of sun there in the distance. Um, again, all of that moving out of Utah and into Colorado and eventually New Mexico. Here's Breckenridge, the view from uh, peak, uh, peak 9 over towards 8. Some light snow coming down. Snow will be intensifying through the mountains of Colorado tonight and throughout the day tomorrow. All right, over to radar. And you can see it. it's all part of this cold front building in over the top of Denver. We got rain showers breaking out. Should quickly go over to snow though as the temperatures fall tonight across Denver and I-25. So below 6,000 feet, which includes Denver, at 5280, looking at rain over to snow and probably one to three inches of accumulation. But if you're west and south of Denver above 6,000, you're looking at three, four plus inches of snow in some places quite a bit um, through the foothills and across the uh, Palmer Divide. Mountain snow will be intensifying tonight, and you can see it coming in from the west. That's that's some pretty good snow over the western slope, the Grand Mesa, the Book Cliffs, and running right into the flat tops and the Elks now. Um, here is that view up in Wyoming. Again, everything coming out of Wyoming, shifting down into Colorado with the cold front. You can see the flow coming around Salt Lake and the Wasatch, so some residual snow showers, um, but by and large, the bulk of this thing now moving into Colorado. All right, here is the uh, the lay of the land. So on the water vapor, your moisture aloft is in your whites and your blues. And so there's our front right here. That's barreling south into Colorado, helping to create that lift that we need across the mountains to really crank out the big snows. Um, and now on the back side of this, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to basically move through Colorado throughout the day tomorrow down into New Mexico. And then it's going to start to develop an area of low pressure over the four corners on the tail end of it. That low is going to be a big player because it's going to sit and it's going to spin over New Mexico and southern Colorado for like two days. And then it's going to make its move back to the north and take that snow and just run it right over the same areas twice. So that, that's going to be a very interesting scenario. And then there's another front up here, which will play into the extended forecast. Okay, here my, here's my latest uh, timeline uh, for best snow chances in the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, and Tahoe. You can see the dates here. I'm not going to go through everything. The snow in the Wasatch really tapering off um, late tonight. So then the next shot is 11, 11, 11, 12 with moderate snow accumulations. That's what the M represents. Um, for Tahoe, there might be a chance of some light snow on 11, 11. I'm not totally sold on that, though, at this point. Um, okay, let me just look at um, what we've got for the forecast radar and satellite. So here we are by 5.30 um, this evening. Snow developing across Colorado's mountains, precip over the front range of Colorado, snow up in Wyoming, snow up in Montana, but again, everything kind of shifting down into Colorado. So by the time we get into tomorrow morning, um, all of that energy is really in Colorado and New Mexico. Here we are on 11.6 in the afternoon. Everything's shifting into southern Colorado and New Mexico. Here's how this plays out. So on 11.7, there's going to be a circulation that develops over the four corners. Then, watch what happens. It's going to make its move back to the north right here. This is on Friday, 5.30 p.m. Now, as the low comes back, it starts to push all that snow back to the north over uh, basically Colorado Springs, Denver, the Front Range, I-25, and parts of I-70, especially right up in the foothills and on the Continental Divide of Colorado. All that's coming in from the south. So here we are. That is Saturday morning. So it's likely you can see the flow and the rotation around the area of low pressure, what it does. Everything just sort of wraps around that area of low pressure. And then it starts to fade by the afternoon, and by Sunday it's gone. Then we wait for the next storm system. Here it comes from the north in the form of a cold front. So another shot of snow right here, 11, 11, 11, 12, through Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, into Colorado, into uh, 11, 13, it moves away. The next storm stays up into the, uh, the northern tier. All right, here are my latest numbers. So basically tonight throughout the day tomorrow, 
Um, the best accumulations are going to be in Colorado and northern New Mexico. So right on top of the Continental Divide in Colorado, A Basin, Loveland, Winter Park, Keystone, Breck, Summit County, four to eight inches of accumulation. Um, if you're over Vail Pass, four to eight inches of accumulation. Four to eight over the Elks, um, Aspen, Buttermilk, Snowmass, the Highlands. If you're in southern Colorado, you're going to get more. Um, probably eight to 14 over the top of the San Juans and the San Grays and 6 to 12 for parts of Taos, Ski Santa Fe, and um, all those areas down there, you know, Ski, Ski Santa Fe all the way into Angel Fire. So, and then less snow to the north. There's a little bit of residual snow potentially up there in the parts of Big Sky in Montana. Here's the second period, and it's still very big. You can see the bullseye over southern Colorado and northern New Mexico. Anywhere in pink purple is going to be over a foot, and that's a lot of places. I mean, we could, you know, if you add up what we're getting in the first period right here. So let's just let's just do an example. Taos 10 there. And then in the second period, we add another 23. You're looking at basically three feet of snow in Taos. Um, Kuchara in Colorado, you got 13 in the first period and another 25 in the second period. So you're looking at three feet of accumulation. So those areas are going to get slammed. The Sand Grays, the Crest Stones, Blanca, Ellingwood, all the way down to Culebra, um, the Spanish Peaks, Cuchara, Taos, Wheeler, all those areas are going to get slammed. Um, in the second period, 11-7 through 11-14, potentially a foot up on the Continental Divide of Colorado um, through Summit County, Vail Pass, Aspen, Snowmask, Monarch, Crested Butte, all those places could do well. Um, four to six up in the Wasatch and potentially a foot around Big Sky or more through Grand Targhee and Jackson Hole, Yellowstone. Um, a foot or more in purple up through parts of Idaho, northwest Montana, B.C. The Pacific Northwest does very well with a couple of feet potential high cascades and high volcanoes. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this uh, afternoon mountain weather update. Appreciate you tuning in here. Take care. Until next time.